Well, well welcome to our podcast here at the Aspen Chapel. And today is Easter Day, and we begin with a reading from Revelations. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb, bringing the fragrant spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing beside them in gleaming bright clothing. The women were very frightened. They bowed their faces toward the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He isn't here. He's been raised. Good morning. From the book of Revelations. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. I think that's an amazing vision of a world in resurrection, where there is no pain, where that light is constantly there. Um, And a great vision for our world. I love that, that old Chinese blessing, the old Chinese blessing, may you never live in interesting times. And unfortunately, we do now seem to be living in interesting times. You know, wherever you look, you can't fail to be struck by the fact that things are on the move. Politically, economically, socially, globally, it seems that somehow the tectonic plates are shifting and a new landscape is emerging. And really, I want to ask, what does that demand of us here in Aspen today on Easter Day? You know, at Easter, we are reminded of love and new life. But you can't have Easter Day without Good Friday. And Good Friday and the crucifixion say that Easter, that new life, is formed out of pain. You know, the pain of the crucifixion brought about the love and the new life of the resurrection. And you can see it everywhere. For something new to come about, there always has to be an element of pain and letting go. The pain of birth. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. We we all want that new life. Aspen was founded on a utopian ideal, and yet often we're unwilling to experience the pain that goes with creating that ideal. And that pain can be experienced on a personal level. It it can be experienced on a family level, on a community level, even on a national level. You know, pain is something we try to avoid, and yet, in fact, it's a sign of health. We have pain to tell us that something needs our attention. You know, we step on a pin and the pain tells us to watch out. And the same is true for emotional pain. It's really saying, deal with me. But most of us don't. You know, we try to repress it. We try to get away from it. And generally, we make it go away without looking at the real symptoms of the pain. Jesus did the opposite of the crucifixion. He saw the pain he had to endure as a part of the journey of love. For him, that pain was a part of that journey. And most of us rid our pain by blaming others. 
you know, it's her fault that I feel the pain. It's their fault that we're in this mess at the moment. It's all their fault. And you project your pain outwards. What Easter tells us is that the pain we feel has something to teach us. That wonderful book, The Prophet, by Khalil Gibran, there's a quote in there which says, your pain, your pain is the breaking of the shell of your understanding. Your pain is the breaking of the shell of your understanding. Even as the stone of the fruit must break, that its heart may stand in the sun, you must know pain. And could you keep your hearts in wonder at the daily miracles of your life? Your pain would seem no less wondrous than your joy. And you would accept the seasons of your heart, even as you've always accepted the seasons that pass over the fields. And you would watch with serenity through the winters of your grief. The question we have to ask ourselves is that when we feel pain from others, you know, do we lash out at them? Do we blame them from the pain that we're feeling? Or do we look at them with compassion as Jesus looked at the robbers on the cross and the Roman guards and said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In the book To Kill a Mockingbird, Atticus had a famous piece of advice for Scout. He said, you will never really understand a person and you, until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. And that is the beginning of compassion. That's the beginning of the compassion, to get into someone's skin and walk around in it a bit. Compassion literally means to feel with being willing to try to understand a person rather than judging them because they're different or because you disagree with them or because you're frightened of them or because they're causing you pain. And that compassion is what leads us from pain to new life and resurrection. It's the compassion that leads us in that direction. And you can apply that in many situations, you know, with people, communities and countries. It is the realisation that compassion leads to understanding. And understanding leads to empathy, which leads to a desire to help. And it is the kindness and love of one human being for another that makes for that transformation. And that is the message of the resurrection. The kindness of love of one person for another, of one community for another, of one country for another. It is then that we will recognize that we are all, as a planet, one community. That, in fact, we're all on the same side. I mean, is it going to take an alien invasion for us to get this? That we're all on the same side. Or some global catastrophe. That we all live in the same home. That we are all one community. Right now, we think of it really from the opposite position. What we're doing all over the place is containing situations. We use force, incarceration, military might, and aggression. It is part of the industrialization of fear. Fear is driving so much of our economy right now. And we're treating the symptoms rather than the causes. Fear is created by reversing the process I just spoke of. It is an unwillingness to cooperate. Fear drives an unwillingness to cooperate which is driven by a failure to understand, which comes about through a lack of empathy created by a failure to be compassionate. The resurrection tells us that there is a way from pain to love, and that is the way of compassion. The alternative, repression, does not lead to new life. It only leads to more pain, and that pain will continue to shout at us until it's dealt with. So here we are on Easter Sunday with the joy of the resurrection. But we have to remember there is no Easter Sunday without Good Friday. So however interesting the times that we live in are, we have a choice as to how to respond to them. And Jesus pointed us towards the way of compassion and love. Let's pray. And we do pray for our world at the moment in these times. We pray for Korea. 
We pray for Syria. We pray for Afghanistan. We pray for Iraq. In all the areas of the world where there is war, oppression, hunger, difficulty. We pray for those areas. We pray for the leaders of the countries that you will fill their hearts with compassion and give them a way to understand and enable and empathize. We pray for our country, that we may be a compassionate country. We pray for our state. We pray for our town, our valley, all those on the mountains at the moment, all those helping, all those visiting, and pray for ourselves, that we may be examples of that compassion. And also, we just pray for those that we know that are struggling at the moment, people with illness and difficulty, people feeling bereaved, in grief. We just remember them in our hearts now. And we have a special lift here at the chapel of people that we are remembering. We think of this Easter day, we think of Patricia Hill, Barbara Orcutt, Will Welsh, Val Brick Carlberg, Anne Hodges, Tracy Houston, Melanie, Galen Gatsky, Linda Schneider, Katie Zanto, Jeff Schlepp, Lauren Ann Bauer, Jan Metz, Lainey Hers, the family of Julia Rourke, and the family of Sarah williams Wolf. Lord, we just ask your blessing and healing to all those people. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, oh.